Hey all here, OS Review. Some of you guys may remember that a couple of years back we checked out the Populele. This was a pretty cool smart ukulele that has LED lights underneath the fretboard that tells you where to position your hands as you're first learning the instrument, and there are even songs that you can quickly master via their companion app on iOS or Android. It's a pretty neat idea of reducing the cost of entry, or really the barrier I would say, for learning a brand new instrument at the comfort of your own home. Today we're taking a look at yet another product from the same folks, but this time it's the Populele piano, and as the name implies, it's a smart mini piano, or really a electronic keyboard, but has the same premise as before. And just like the Populele, there are LED lights underneath all of the keys, which will indicate how you can place your fingers to press on the different notes as they are incoming. So it's quite a fun, interactive way of learning. Since it is completely electronic, you're able to even change the way it sounds if you don't like the classic piano sound, you can tweak it into more of a synthesizer, more of a guitar sound, so on and so forth. So they claim it can be more of a music production or creation tool as well. Plus there is a modular magnetic chord pad that you can attach onto the side to add even more dynamics and different instrumentals on top of the sounds that you're playing back, compatible with other third-party apps as well, including GarageBand, again, for music production purposes. There's a hard shell carrying case, which has a super vibrant gradient finish on the front. Interestingly, there's a hole that you can use to press on the power key to wake up the piano, and so that when you take it out of the box, it's already turned on and ready to pair. The top also features a handle, and in general, it's pretty well built with pretty good attention to detail, again, kind of this synthetic leather finish going on. On the inside here, we have, of course, the Popu Piano, and down below, it we'll have the modular chord pad, and last but not least, a quick user guide. Closer look at the hardware, the Poppy Piano has 29 keys compared to a full-size piano having 88 keys. So on the plus side, it's a lot more compact and easy to take when on the road. Here it is next to an average smartphone with a 6.5-inch screen, so it's about two smartphones in terms of width. One potential trade-off, though, is if you're trying to play more complex pieces and you have to jump between higher octaves and lower octaves, you have to press on these buttons to essentially shift the virtual position of the keyboard higher or lower. Still, it's a rather unique design. All of the keys have this matte, translucent texture to allow the lights to shine through and do feel quite good as you're tapping down on it. The top here features just the power key, which is accented in chrome, having a very shiny, almost mirror-like finish to it. Boot-up animation is also rather dazzling. The brightness of the LEDs, by the way, you can also customize via their companion app, and then just the Poppy Piano logo. On the left-hand spine, there's access to the aforementioned magnetic pogo contacts for the optional cord pad, which snaps into place super easily, and then within just a split second, it is initialized and ready to go. The back here features just a USB Type-C port. It takes about an hour or so to fully recharge. And what's kind of neat is that the LED lights also serves as a battery indication when it's being charged up. Like the battery scale on a phone, the green bars will slowly get higher and higher until it reaches 100% like this. On the very bottom, there's just some soft-touch rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around on a surface or a desk. So overall, build and finish does feel rather premium and well put together with some subtle accents and also use of rubber accents on the keys as well as on the back to provide some extra traction. And even without connecting to the companion app, you are able to change some of the preset animations for the LED lights just by tapping on the left and right keys on the top here together. So if we tap once, this will now go into a reactive mode where if you tap on it, it will ripple outward. It's also quite similar to what mechanical keyboards, RGB keyboards provide, but still quite fun. Perhaps not quite as useful if you are actually playing in a darker environment since it's a little bit harder to see the keys until you tap on something, but it can still be fun as a showcase, maybe a conversation starter mode if you have friends over. Tapping on it again will do the same reactive mode, but now it will only be in the white color as you can tell. Once more, it will remain always on but only in white instead of the crazy RGB shades, a little bit more clean and classic looking before it will then cycle back into the rainbow RGB that we saw there from before. Now moving into the companion app, a couple of notes here is that it does turn your device sideways, you can use a tablet or a phone, and the actual piano, as you heard there, actually doesn't have built-in speakers of its own. Pros and cons of that means if you aren't paired to your phone, the actual piano doesn't make any sound, so it does require this connection for it to function, but on the plus side, you're able to choose whether you want, for example, AirPods, wireless headphones for more privacy as you're practicing, or you can even connect it to speakers to get a higher volume output. This Poppy Music app, by the way, is also the same one used for their Populele smart ukulele and their smart guitar products as well. So it's consolidated for all their various offerings. 
The largest tile here, corresponding to games and courses, will take you through the basics of how to master this instrument. It usually starts with a video tutorial that can take a few seconds to buffer, but afterwards it will start up, and you'll see the corresponding lights there shine as well on the piano, so you know how to follow along with the tutorial guide. After a few seconds, it will typically pause and then tell you to press on the corresponding key to practice and get to your turn. So here we have a quick example of Do, Re, Mi, and we can tap on the second key, and then moving on to the third one in the sequence. So here's a quick demo of what happens afterwards. You usually have to practice what you just learned using a song that then goes through those same notes or chords now with the rhythm. So similar to Guitar Hero, you have to kind of align your playing with the kind of notes that are virtually appearing on the display to then get you a score of how well you're doing in terms of precision and rhythm that will show up there at the end. As long as you are passing, for example, getting higher than 80% accuracy, you'll be able to proceed onto the next lesson in the course. So these courses will continue until you get comfortable enough using really your right hand as the dominant hand, I would argue, for the poppy piano. Since it's a smaller keyboard at the end of the day, I would say about 60 to 70% of the time, you are just primarily using this hand to play the songs, whereas your left hand will primarily be engaging with the chord pad to add some additional rhythm to the music. Although there are small instances where you'll be using both hands, it is going to be a little bit more rare, or I should say advanced, but eventually you do get to that part of the lesson. You can then move on to some more advanced courses that will teach you about also hand posture. A good way to think of it is you should be thinking of holding kind of an invisible ball in your hand as you're playing along. And note that all of the videos, of course, you can revisit at any time in the future if you want to practice it once again. Other tiles here include one called AIGC. It's really interesting. So it claims that it's able to generate songs using AI. So for example, you can select on a genre that you'd like, whether it's R&B, Chinese, pop, rock. So let's say I wanted to just select a few random notes here. I can then tap on generate a song and wait for the AI there to create something similar to how on ChatGPT, Bard, as well as even Bing, you're able to ask the AI to write you a poem. What's happening behind the scenes, though, is it's trained on vast amounts of data from existing music, and that may borrow certain elements from other songs and kind of mix and match it together to create something new, so to speak, from the AI's perspective. Now, other things that you can access here include free play, so this will just change into a UI that mirrors what your piano here is seeing. For example, now just beginning to play, you'll see the visualization occur as I'm playing here on the keyboard. And we can also shift, again, the octave higher or lower just by tapping on the left and right keys there once. So now the same notes will sound just one octave higher. Tapping on it again, it will now move towards the top there of its range. And you'll see that it's basically reached the maximum now of its range. The color there will turn red, as you can tell. A little bit more piercing there. And similarly, we're able to now shift also backwards, play back lower octave notes, as you can tell, until we hit also the lowest section that it's capable of reproducing. Otherwise, you can change the sound of the piano into something like strings, as well as guitar, percussion, which is kind of an interesting one. Here's a light press versus a harder press. You can hear a difference in terms of volume, just like on the classic piano side as well. So unlike more low-cost and conventional electric keyboards, which have historically been more difficult to express emotion sometimes, because regardless of how hard you're pressing, all the notes will sound the same in terms of volume output giving it a bit more of that artificial sense. But on here, because of the pressure sensitivity, which is the same as what you get on an actual piano, it does sound a lot more convincing. You can get a little bit more emotive with your playing as well. Next one over here is synthesizer. Here we have orchestra, starting off with saxophone, but you can also change into something like flute if desired. But it typically requires maybe a double tap just to download that profile. Still quite fast though, this one here under Chinese, more of a string instrument, the Gu Sheng, but you can also change it into other ones as well. And here we also have some effects, more of a comedy or just for laughs function, I would say, or perhaps if you're recording some type of live show, you want to add some artificial sound effects, you can play around with that one. 
Final tab over here also allows you to change into even ukulele as well as harp. A pretty fun nod to their populele as the origin for this brand in terms of their instruments. Even under piano, by the way, the classic one can also be changed to more of an electronic piano sound. Even one here called jazz piano. which is still giving us a piano sound, but maybe one that is just a little bit more weathered sounding. Now, other icons that we have available include a record function. So if you're free playing a song that you've practiced, you can record it onto your phone's memory. You can also start a metronome, helping you play around with a consistent rhythm. You'll hear that beat kind of like the ticking of a clock, and you can change the speed, of course. You can also light up different keys depending on chords that you're playing back as well. For example, E3 will be using these particular keys, and you'll see them light up here accordingly on the keyboard. So pretty neat. And you can also tap on the final icon here under lighting to also customize what individual keys will be in terms of their colors. Similarly, some of the common chords and genres can also be selected to light up those corresponding keys that are often used in that style of music. For example, here's the blue scale, and you'll see the color here also shine blue if we tap on those keys. That is blues. This one here is the Chinese scale. It will now turn orange. This one here is the Japanese scale. Now it's turning kind of a violet shade. And so on and so forth. So actually quite fun, and that can give you a little bit of assistance if you're trying to create perhaps a new song in that particular style. You can reference those as the common lit up notes. And last but not least, perhaps the most fun tile is Pop Hits. This allows you to practice your favorite songs by different artists and genres. I will say that the roster of available music under Pop Hits, it's growing, but it still has a little bit more room to further expand, I would say. Some of the more popular titles include songs from Taylor Swift, from Adele, Maroon 5. Bruno Mars, but more obscure titles and artists that might not be perhaps at the top of their genre are going to be a little harder to come across under their current collection. But of course, once you get good enough at playing this, you can arguably tackle songs on your own, and this just gets the basics done. Further down below, you do find some more global music, I would say, so songs from foreign countries including Japan, as well as China, so on and so forth, can also be referenced down below. You also see a final tab here that sorts some of that music by easy, medium, and hard, so this gives you an idea of which titles might be requiring fewer chords to play at least in their version on the poppy piano, versus harder ones might be a little bit more complex. Now here's a quick demo, if we tap on a song, you'll see the specific ranking from other global players, as well as as you can access a practice and a demonstration mode. So the demonstration will be playing back basically a video of someone else playing the song so you can hear the melody for the first time. And more importantly, the keys also light up corresponding to the rhythm that you'll be eventually playing. You can also go into a practice mode and the difference compared to the regular play mode is unless you've pressed on the correct key, it will not proceed onto the next note. So it slows things down to a comfortable pace for you to actually learn the notes for the first time, and then it links everything together on the actual play mode, which will not pause for you if you've missed a note, you've missed it, and it will be deducted from your accuracy score. But under the practice mode, you won't really be getting a full score, rather just for you to improve your skills here with the rhythm. Now, something you'll see on the Poppy Piano is there is kind of a faint light that appears often next to the one that is brightly lit. And this actually just gives you an indication or really a foreshadowing that this will be the next note that is coming up. So it's the most brightly lit key that you have to tap on now, and then the one that is not quite as brightly lit is coming up next in the sequence. And for copyright reasons, I'm just going to mute the audio here, but this gives you an example of what it's like as you're playing back some of the games, again with more complex rhythm and notes that are being shown here in conjunction with the chord pad here that appears on the side. So it is a pretty fun process, and once you start getting better, you'll be able to maybe even sing along with the music, record audio from the microphone simultaneously, and be able to then listen back to the music later on. Now, of course, compared to a real piano, maybe one other difference is that the width of the keys are going to be a touch smaller. I would say it's comfortable enough such that if you are typing commonly with a full-size keyboard, for instance, a mechanical keyboard, you can tell that the keys by contrast, are not too far off, and it still feels decent. I wouldn't say it required a huge acclimation period. Depending on where you're pressing on the chord pad, it also produces different sounds. For example, lower notes, 
slightly higher, and then the highest there at the very top. So this also creates essentially three different sets of sounds depending on where you're pressing. So pretty fun, although this part I would say is the most different, obviously, compared to a regular piano. So that is more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Pop U Piano. And I have to say it's yet another very clever and very interestingly engineered product from this company of making smart instruments. And I like their overall aim. Not to mention I'm kind of a sucker for the RGB LED lights as well, which are just super colorful, vibrant, and beautiful to look at. So a pretty cool product at the end of the day. And you can check out more details if you are interested in the links down below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS reviews.